So today I thought I would do something a little bit different. The City of Toronto has a number of road redesigns that they're planning in the near future to redesign these roads as complete streets. In most cases, this involves an increased focus on walking, cycling, including separated bike lanes, protected intersections, and traffic calming. These will include new elements that are not really present in anywhere Toronto today. So I thought it'd be good to take a look at them. So the one I thought we could start with is the plans for the Queensway in the west side of Toronto on, in Etobicoke. Uh, and we could discuss how far they, they would go to change it into a complete street for all and what things they maybe could do to take it to uh, a next level. So let's dive into the plans. So these are high level plans. So there's some detail that just don't exist. And in some cases that's, uh, that's important, but we're not gonna have the detail here. So we might have to make some assumptions or talk about maybe what could be done in those cases. So this is the area of the Queensway in question and this is the area that it's gonna cover, but I thought we could take a bit of a look um, at it in Google Maps and some of the features of the area to give a bit more context. Uh, one thing um, uh, that the presentation doesn't touch on that I'd like to discuss is like why this is a really critical cycling uh, corridor. So we can see where it goes. It, it goes from kind of the east side of this community all the way uh, to the Humber River. Um, east of this, there are bike lanes uh, you can see Google Maps representing that here. Um, and in most cases, they're buffered bike lanes or just straight, straight bike lanes. So why is this such a critical um, cycling area for certain communities? Well, the area that I think it's really important for are people that live in kind of this area um, around it, maybe up here um, and around uh, this to kind of the north and the west of where the bike lanes are going in. And I'll, I'll talk about a few reasons why, but mainly it's because if these people are going east, which is where I think a lot of people cycling will go since east is downtown Toronto, um, this is really the only way to go uh, without going way out of your way. And that might be hard to see in this picture, but I'll talk a little bit about why. Um, so the first thing that comes up a lot is if, is if someone's going to anywhere in kind of the mid or south area of downtown that they're going to use the waterfront trail. Um, the problem is for a lot of the areas around here is the waterfront path is really not that accessible um, until you get to about this area where kind of the, the area in question ends. The reason that's the case is has to do with basic geography. Um, and if we look at the shoreline of Lake Ontario along here, it doesn't go straight. It actually goes up and then it comes quite far down. And so uh, let's say you were going to use Royal, Royal York to uh, go south and meet up with the lake, which is a corridor that would make sense for a lot of the area uh, living in, in here. Uh, if you were to try to do that, you wouldn't just go down to the lake. You would have to go all this way south and then you'd have to go all this way back up north until you get back up here, which uh, is pretty close to Queensway. So most people are gonna want to use Queensway along here. And if you look at um, what area those people are gonna go along, that includes you know, m most of the downtown. If you're gonna go anywhere in this section, I would say you're probably gonna use that quarter. So this is, if we're gonna engage any of the people in these communities to start cycling, um, this is a really critical corridor. And I felt like that was something uh, that I didn't see in the slides as much, so I wanted to uh, take a special focus to mention it. The, the presentation has a, a good section on like why now. Um, and this is an important thing to talk about because a lot of these um, more transformative redesigns uh, will coincide with larger work being done on the road. So usually it's when uh, water main replacement needs to be done or other big rehabilitation work on the road needs to be done. Um, that's a big opportunity. Uh, the city obviously doesn't like to disrupt people over and over and over again to put in new infrastructure. So they wait for these opportunities to uh, redesign things, upgrade them, that kind of thing. So, and so this is an interesting slide. I think we'll come back to it later, but because of the food terminal, just a little bit of information uh, for anyone who doesn't know, this food terminal is one of the biggest places where produce comes in from outside of the city. So it's, it's right off the highway, you can see the gardener right here, and trucks come off, will unload food, 
and they'll go on to smaller trucks to be distributed to different uh, grocery stores and other places. So this is, this is one of the main places for this side of the city that this happens. So there's a lot of truck movement here and it's a really important use even if it's not uh, very functional on a community level. Uh, and this kind of shows the circulation of the vehicles. Uh, we'll come back to this later because I want to talk about it a bit more, but I, I did think uh, it was in interesting to show and a really important aspect of this area that's if you're talking about um, building it for cycling and walking, it's not ideal that there's a lot of trucks using it. And so that's something that really needs to be managed uh, properly. Okay, and this also shows uh, a couple of areas that cluster to make the most dangerous parts of this area. It sh this shows different types of collisions in the area. And you can see the main ones are around Queensway and Park Lawn, uh, which is not surprising. It's a very busy infrastructure. The angles are a bit weird, you can see, which I think make it a bit funny for uh, people turning and crossing. Uh, and then the other area is just east of here. And we'll see why in a little bit. Um, I think the designs give some, or the, the, pre the slides give some really good uh, reasoning for that. So the only thing I wanted to talk about here is the integrated bike, bike and bus stops. Um, I talked about that in the previous video up here. So uh, I'll link to that and please take a look at it if you're interested. Uh, this is one solution that's definitely better than the existing ones, but I think could be improved upon. Uh, and two things to note here, just that we might want to look at when we get to those uh, sections of the design. One is the smart and coordinated signals. And I think these are really important. Uh, there's a lot in, in that that I'm not sure what that means. What, what is a smart and coordinated signal? This could be very promising and, and there's a lot of good reasons to think that this could improve things quite a bit, but I don't really know what it means fully. So we'll talk to that about that, I think, when we get to the Park Lawn Queensway intersection. Uh, but wanted to note it here. And then also another thing to note is the truck aprons so that they plan to use these truck aprons to force vehicles to make a wide turn like you see here, but also to allow trucks to turn. And we'll talk a little bit about that when we get to that same intersection as well. All right, so now we get into the different phases of the design. Here's the Humber River to the Queensway. Um, this is the portion that some of which already has bike lanes. Uh, and you can see that here, there's something wrong with the presentation here where it's not showing this side, but um, th this side is actually, you can see, uh, is separated. So there, it's not like one road with a median, they're two separate sections. And so the north side that uh, runs west, you can see has two, two wide lanes of vehicle traffic and a bike lane with a buffer, but no real physical separation and a really, really narrow sidewalk. The, east, the other side doesn't have any sidewalk at all. Uh, and so what's being proposed is widening of the sidewalks, uh, cycle track being put in, which separates the, the, um, the cyclists from the road. And you'll see that in a lot of places. And the way a lot of this is achieved is through narrowed lane, which is good because uh, that is a traffic calming measure. And so this is the main concept that I think you see throughout the design. So I don't know if I'm gonna go through all of it in detail, but you can see you take a general road section that includes really wide designs, it includes small sidewalks and not much else, and it adds the cycle tracks, um, the widening of sidewalks, narrowing of lanes. And that's the main theme I would say in most of this. And so I wanna skip ahead to this section, and this is a really important section that I think we're gonna look at in a bit of detail. Uh, this section you can see, uh, this is the cross section for it. It's the same concept, we're widening the, the sidewalks and narrowing the lanes, um, but there's one aspect I wanted to point out in that, that they're adding a median here. Um, and the main reason is because you, you remember back on that map that showed the collision, this is the area that showed a lot of collisions even though it wasn't at an intersection. And that's because right now there's free uh, left-hand turns to and from a bunch of these, uh, these are houses and businesses adding that buffer in the middle here will make a big difference. Uh, we can see the, the, the negative impact is, is what's gonna happen to people who access these roads uh, along this area. And instead of going direct and turning left, they're gonna have to go through a side street. Now, I think this is an easy, easy trade-off because you're talking about a small handful of lots, which they point out here, um, and it's really not gonna impact uh, people's travel time significantly. And here's a bit of an artist rendering. so. Uh, you can see it still does have uh, a pretty suburban feel, 
but uh, the really positive part is that you're seeing uh, cycling tracks that are set back quite a bit from the road, which will make it safer for vehicles that are trying to turn across it. Uh, and then this is the Park Lawn and Queensway intersection. And so there's a lot going on here. Um, and we have to remember that it is high level. Um, it is uh, just a, a high level design at this point, and we might not see some of the details. If we see the bus waiting facilities here, to me, this is really positive. This is what you want to see, even though they called out that there would be places where they would be doing the other style of bus boarding. Uh, I think this is the proper way to do it with uh, the cycling facilities going behind the bus stops. And you can see that there's plenty of room here to do that. Uh, another area is the truck apron. And we talked about that a little bit before. Um, here you can see a truck apron where the curb seems to go along here, but they've extended it out here for vehicles. And so um, to me, this is not the most ideal. I think you would really want a curb to enforce vehicles taking a wider turn radius um, because then they're more likely to slow down and meet the crossing at a better angle. Um, but I do understand a, a lot of the concerns with these designs in North America have to do with trucks and specifically around emergency vehicles like fire trucks being able to make the turns properly in these areas. Uh, another interesting aspect is this two lane cycle path. Now this is because there's that trail that they'll be building to connect to. So this is an interesting solution where they've said, well, we're gonna allow two way cycle traffic on this side, make it a bit wider. And then we have a way to connect to that, uh, that area. The thing that we kind of need to be careful about when doing this is uh, two way cycle tracks can be dangerous at an intersection, uh, especially at a high speed intersection like this. Vehicles now have to watch out for more things, um, including now cyclists in both directions, pedestrians, maybe other vehicles, especially if they're turning left. Uh, so what is done a lot and what would be interesting to be seen uh, here is move this if you're going to have a two way cycling path, make this a raised crossing. Uh, and that will cause vehicles to have to slow down to uh, make the essentially the speed bump up to the area. Uh, and then they can take into account who's crossing here uh, and that type of thing. Now, the problem with that uh, is, I, uh, as I understand it, is that the TTC um, prefers not to have raised crossings in a lot of areas because it, it can make things uh, unpleasant for people uh, riding riding a bus in the area and I can understand that um, but I think it's a little bit challenging and you have to balance the different needs now a lot of this the safety concerns could be minimized with um, I think with smart uh, smart signals um, and that's what I mentioned was really in the details so what does a smart signal mean now uh, usually it means something that's going to adjust the signal timings based on actual current conditions um, and so that's very positive, right? It means that you can move the most people, whether that be in a bus or if there's a number of cyclists waiting, um, different things like that, um, as efficiently as possible. But also your movements can take into account safety. So you're not allowing people to turn left just as a whole bunch of uh, cyclists are going. So a lot of that's in the details, but that can really reduce the amount of conflict points in an area. So um, a lot of the I think this intersection of how it goes, very promising to see protected cycle infrastructure, but a lot of it will be in the detail of how the design comes out and how it's implemented to see how safe it is. Uh, something to note is a number of side streets improvements, and you can see they're using the protected cycle infrastructure for these side streets, which I think is really positive. Um, and they're essentially extend extending the separated bike lanes to an area a little bit away from the main road. And I think this is a perfect way to do it, even if you're not gonna use protected lanes on these side streets. Um, the intersection is the most important part. It's the most dangerous part for, for anybody. So to add the protection here, um, at the very least, even if you're not gonna continue it down, this is more important than the, the protected bike lanes further down. So I was really happy to see uh, these designs. Again, I think the thing that would add to some of these is raised crossings. So um, uh, having the crossing raised up so that it's continuous. I'll put a link to a Not Just Bikes video uh, about that up here and you can, you can check that out of why that's important. But a lot of those could be used more in this design um, whenever there's a side street or a uh, entrance to an area, I think 
this, this could really benefit from uh, seeing more of those. All right, so I wanted to go back, back briefly to this section of the Queensway. And just as a reminder, this is the section outside of the um, food terminal where you have uh, different houses and businesses on the north side, the food terminal on the south side, and where they're planning on adding that extra median in the middle um, to prevent left turns. And I wanted to talk a little bit about this section because I think it presents some really unique design challenges. One around uh, the truck movements that are happening, uh, as well as having a very different use and having those uh, different houses and businesses on the north side. Um, it's a really unique situation where the two sides of the streets have completely different uses, uh, but they have to coexist together um, somehow. This is the, the proposal right now, and you can see they have that median in the middle, uh, narrowed lanes, which is good to see, uh, cycle track on both sides, and widened sidewalks. So with that, I kind of thought, given the uniqueness of this area, what could we do to kind of take this to the next level? So uh, I want to talk about a few things. First being the, uh, the trucks that will use the area to go to the food terminal. Um, now, from looking at those plans and my understanding of the area, most of the, 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 the trucks use the food terminal in a, a similar kind of circulation, the way they get in and out of the food terminal, and it's kind of interesting. So most of them will come off the gardener here, along here, uh, turn left along Park Lawn, turn right to the Queensway, which is through our study area, and then take a right into the food terminal. And so that's how they get in. Now to get out, they actually have a dedicated exit that exits right onto the on-ramp to the gardener. So, you know, I'm sure there's exceptions. There's maybe vehicles that do need to turn other ways for different reasons. And so I, I don't wanna be, you know, kind of absolutist about it, but I think most of them do it that way, which means that most trucks are going, uh, only staying on one side of these roads. And so I think if you wanted to kind of think about what else you could do for the street, you could take that kind of information to advantage. Um, and then the second thing I wanted to talk about is the north side of Queens where, where we have uh, a number of different businesses uh, and houses. So this is kind of an interesting area where single, a number of single uh, unit housing was built, um, but a number of them have been converted into businesses because uh, unsurprisingly, a lot of people don't want to uh, live along a busy street. Uh, and so it does present some challenges with a lot of vehicles turning in and out. So uh, another way other than the design that you might be able to uh, manage something like this is kind of with a side access road. So you would have kind of an access road along this side that is separated from the main traffic that you would have to access via one of the side roads. So it's kind of like an expansion on the, the design that they talked about. So I wanted to go over a little bit about what, if you, if you tried to take all those things into account and all those different design elements, what this street could look like. So this is the current use of the street. Uh, I've, I've taken what, uh, what the city's done and imported it into a different program. It, it's the same widths and everything, um, but I've, I've, uh, I've changed it just into this program so we can compare a little bit easier. And then when we look at what it looks like in the complete street designs, this is, this is what you have. Um, and then taking into account the different things I was talking about, uh, this is what the new design might look like. Uh, and so I'll talk through a little bit about what I did here. So on the south side right here, I thought, and this is, this is maybe a little bit of a unique uh, idea. Um, I, I don't know if I've seen this anywhere else. It was just something I thought of through uh, thinking about the uses and, and what's happening would be a specific lane specifically for trucks doing that movement. So this could come up, uh, vehicles will turn left onto Park Lawn from the Gardener uh, and then use that right turn slip lane and then it, that would go into a dedicated lane that only trucks going into the food terminal would use. So this would separate a lot of the majority of the truck uh, volumes from the street into this one lane, making the rest of the street hopefully a lot safer. Uh, next to it, you have a bit of a buffer. I couldn't show it here, but you might have a barrier here because there's gonna be trucks going by the other side and a really wide sidewalk to use that buffer to separate people from uh, the trucks as much as possible. 
uh, your, you'd have your, your uh, cycle path on here. Then you'd have a space here for, I put a transit shelter and in cases where you have a bus stop, that's what it would be. Um, but you could also use this for uh, bike storage, uh, bike parking, uh, planters, other different things. And, and then uh, you could also move this um, from one side to the other as you need it. So if you need a bus stop on here, you add more width here and take it away from here um, as you need it throughout the street. You have two lanes of traffic. So I have reduced it from uh, four to two lanes, but I've added a bunch of facilities on the other side. So that's kind of the compromise I'm using. Uh, but this would be only basically for through traffic, right? You'd have only people going through the area. Um, you'd have some separation on the other side, your your cycle path, and then here's the kind of access street. And so what I've what I've done is this is a fairly narrow lane. You're going to have vehicles driving very slowly and some parking on the side so that people can use it to access this vehicle or these uh, these businesses. Um, and then a, a nice, nice wide sidewalk on the other side. Uh, so this is an air, this is a way to really um, use the different parts of the road a bit more effectively, uh, slow things down. So you, you have your two lanes for through and those are a little bit wider, but you could still have uh, different traffic co traffic calming measures. Um, an access area that would be much slower and you wouldn't get any through vehicles uh, through there because people would be accessing it from the different side roads, kind of like the complete street design does today. And then nice wide sidewalks and different things for people to access. So uh, this was kind of just a thought experiment. I'd love to know what you think about it. Um, so leave that down in the comments. Uh, I'd, I'd be really interested to know if people think there's some things here that don't make sense or things we could do better or anything like that. So uh, yeah, I think that's it for today. Um, if you enjoyed the video, hit all those little YouTube buttons on the bottom. Please feel free to engage me, leave comments, thoughts. Um, I'd love to discuss this more. Uh, so with that, with that, I'll see you at the next video.